Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If we haven't met already, my name is Eric and today we're going to do a video that is a little bit different. As a PhD student, I know from personal experience that the journey towards that elusive doctoral degree can be a roller coaster of emotions, from the heights of a groundbreaking discovery to the lows of a paper rejection or the writer's block. But fear not, because throughout this roller coaster ride, like the good millennial that I am, I turn to memes to keep me going. You've probably stumbled upon some hilarious PhD memes yourself, perhaps while procrastinating. Don't we all, after all? So today, we're going to rank these memes in an epic tier list. From the relatable meme to the sign splitting one, we'll sort them from S tier to D tier. After all, there is no failing in the meme world. Before we dive in, let me know in the comments down below if you're currently on the PhD journey yourself, or if you have finished and have already triumphed over your thesis defense. I'd love to hear your own favorite memes and which ones you think should make it to the top. Okay, so here we are with our tier list, our tier board, and I have prepared 21 memes to go through together. So without further ado, let's start. The first one is this one, me mailing professors, polite greeting, perfect grammar, thorough proofreading, professor, okay, sent from my iPhone. Um, this one is true to some degree, but I feel the first part mostly applied to undergraduates. I think when you're a PhD student, you get to know your PI a little bit better, and so you try to keep it short. There is still an imbalance, but it's not quite as comical as it is with undergraduates. So we start off a little bit poorly, and I'm gonna give this meme a D in my experience. So there we go. But this is just the beginning, so let's see what's next. Me. <laughs> papers I should read. Um, yeah, this is quite true. Reading papers when you have so much to do is not on the top of your priorities most of the times, and it's also something that takes quite a lot of time, so it's sort of like, you know, eating a plate of vegetables. You, you have to do it from time to time, but you're not too keen on that, you know. So I'm going to give this an B, maybe... Maybe even an A. Yeah, why not? A tier for that one. And next up, you did an awesome job. Well done, imposter syndrome. Oh yeah, this is this is true. This is true, especially if you end up a very competitive university. You will think that everyone else around you is smarter and doing better research than you are. So, 100% accurate. Not quite as funny as I would like it to be. So for that reason, I'm going to give it just an A, but nevertheless, great stuff, great stuff. Okay, next up. Next up, we have when you're telling your friends about your research and they have no idea what you're talking about, but they're supportive. Yeah, <laughs> that's, um, that's definitely true as well. Uh, because your project is so personal and so deep into one specific topic, you will be the expert on that topic and nobody else around you will be as expert as you are on your research. Again, funny picture, funny comment, but maybe not quite as funny as one would expect. So I'm actually going to give these just a C. Still funnier than the first one and more accurate, but you know. Uh, Saiha me. <laughs> A lot of papers of men. Yeah, <laughs> this uh, this is uh, this is my meme. Like this represents me 100%. I have many papers saved into Mendeley into the to do read list. I just love this meme partly because the Sword in the Stone is my favorite Disney movie of all times. So I think to me this one gets everything right. It actually is completely representative of my situation. It's a quirky and funny way of exposing it. They get the reference straight, so 
yeah, for me, this just goes skyrocket high to S tier. No doubt about it. Uh, next up, uh, me peer reviewing minus scripts from people that are clearly more experienced than me. Uh, very scientific. <laughs> nice graphs. Uh, this happened to me. Um, this happened to me during my first year. My supervisor invited me to peer review a paper for a journal that he was uh, part of the editorial team with. And I actually emailed him back saying, I'm not sure I can do this because I have no idea what they're talking about, basically. I mean, I tried to put it in a little bit of a nicer, more polished way, but that was the message. And he he came back to me very nicely saying, oh, don't worry, you're just like a supplemental sort of peer review. Uh, we have the official uh, reviewers uh, lined up, so you will just be stitched on as an extra comment. So feel free to write whatever. It's good that you get exposure to that world because if you're continuing to academia, it's something that you will have to do. So I can totally relate to this one. I, I just love dogs. I'm a dog person. And so, yeah, this one again, straight up to S tier for me. So what do we have up next? Number seven. The fastest things on earth, cheetah airplane, speed of light, conference attendees when coffee break starts. Uh, okay, this is again 100% accurate, um, but I will stand by this because, you know, if you, if you do a job in the industry, you normally get some kind of perks. You might get private health insurance. You might get various perks that comes with the job, uh, depending on the industry. And instead, if you work in academia, we only get one perk. And that one perk is free food in conference attendance. So yeah, I totally get why people run for that. It's a little bit weird. It reinforces the stereotypical weird scientist picture, but it's our only perk. So yeah, of course we want to make use of that. Um, and for that reason, I'm gonna give this S tier again. I think we skipped one. Um, let's see if we can find it. So I've just realized that we skipped number six because for some weird reason, I renamed it number 25 in my folder. But here it is. Googling stuff online doesn't make your doctor. Literally everyone in PhD. Yeah, again, this I think it's quite accurate. I think it represents a large proportion of PhD students, but it suffers from the same problem of some earlier ones. I don't get the reference. If you know the reference, let me know in the comments down below, by the way. But I don't get the reference of the picture and it's not as funny as I thought it should be. So for that reason, I'm gonna give it a C tier here. I'm sorry if I'm not getting the reference. If you know that, please let me know, but this is where I stand at the moment. Uh, next up, we have this one. Um, authors making a big claim. No one has worked on this research topic to the best of our knowledge. Yes, this is um, played safe, right? If you are publishing something that is supposed to be new and you've done your research, um, you really want to claim, we know that this is new. We know that nobody has ever done this and hence it's a nice little paper, a nice little result that we want to push out to the world. But it's very difficult to prove that nobody has ever done that because they might be using different notation, different name, perhaps it's in a different field because now the science fields are not completely separate like they were like say 300 years ago, they all overlap. So what I do in network science could easily have been done by someone in theoretical physics or in computer science. And it's already very difficult to keep up in the advances of your own special field that it's absolutely impossible to do that for multiple fields. So this is your insurance, basically. It's why it's what you can claim without making too bold of a statement. Um, again, same problem as before, not quite as funny, but I'm going to give this a B. No, let's be consistent. Uh, same problem as those two 
C tier. Next up, we have my supervisor reading my thesis draft. Um, yeah, this is me. This is me in this moment. I am now drafting the first two chapters of my thesis for something that is called the confirmation of status, which if you're not familiar with Oxford system is the end of third year exam. And I've just written 70, 80 pages about that. And then I sent my first draft to my supervisor a couple of months ago, and I can totally see him being um, this woman. Again, I don't get the reference, but this is 100% on point. I think it's really funny. Um, so I'm going to give it A tier because I think it deserves that. Next up, what do we have? After writing two lines of my thesis. Um, yes, again, um, I've said it before on this channel. I don't really like writing down my results. I really much prefer to code and try new stuff. That's why you do your PhD, right? Because you're interested in your research topic and in your research area. So playing around with stuff in your research area is normally very fun. Uh, to you, at least. Uh, whereas stopping it and writing down what you found is very important because it forces you to put everything together and in order, but it can be a real, real pain. And this meme gets it straight on point. Um, I'm gonna give this uh, a tier. There we go. Um, next up. Me trying to start a conversation with undergrad student. How do you do, fellow kids? Yeah, <laughs> again, very on point for me because I started my PhD slightly later than average when I was age 26. I'm now 29 and I will be graduate after turning third. So that's a few years behind the schedule. So I do feel a little bit older than most of my peers. Um, and so I can see the effect of this meme being amplified to me for that reason. Um, but I don't think this is actually very funny. I'm sorry to whoever created this, but it's just not for me. So I'm sorry, but this needs to go into D tier for me. Um, next up, people say I'm a plagiarist. Their words, not mine. Um, I don't know how I feel about this. Um, it's a very cheap joke. I don't think this is actually a thing because plagiarism is such a blatant academic offense and it also stays with you for your entire life. So say you plagiarize something now and the university doesn't find out and you discuss your thesis and everything goes well. But if the university finds out that you plagiarize something in your PhD, 30 years from now, they can still cancel your degree retroactively. So if you plagiarize something now, you then live in fear of anyone finding out. So yeah, I don't think this one is very accurate and I don't find it very funny either. So this is going straight to D tier. Okay, I've been very polarized. There's no B so far, so let's see if the the upcoming ones. Um, thank you, Mario, but your postdoc is in another castle. It just doesn't work for me because I probably don't want to continue in academia. I know that a lot of people want to, and this is sort of the main purpose of a PhD, but it just doesn't work for me. Um, I also don't find it very funny. Um, I'm gonna give it C tier. So, what do we have next? Abstract result. Yeah, this is again 100% accurate because the abstract is the advertisement for your paper. It's what people see first, whereas the result is where the actual thing lies, right? It's where you present your method and you verify that everything works and that your discovery is actually uh, a new one and it works. And so it's very difficult to write and it's very difficult to get right. So yeah, I can see where they're coming from, but I just don't find this as funny as it should be. 
So I'm gonna give it B tier because I think it's better than the other ones in the C tier and I also am getting slightly anxious that I won't put anything else in B tier otherwise. Next up we have this is the first study too. Yeah, that's, um, that's another statement that we use all the time. It goes hands in hands with to the best of our knowledge. The formulaic phrase is to the best of our knowledge. This study is the first one that does such and such. I really like this meme because I think it's relatable for people that are not doing a PhD as well, because it's part of a larger family of the Obama with Obama memes. So for this reason, I'm going to give it an A tier. There we go. Next up. My thesis watching me on Netflix. Um, yes, writing not only is quite boring, but it also requires lots of attention and it's very easy to get distracted. So yeah, I can totally relate to this meme here. I was in that situation a month ago. In addition to that, I think that is the face of Joey from Friends. I'm a huge Friends fan. I've seen it twice. One of the best television shows of all times. Um, it's just a straight S meme to me. Um, just goes right up. Next up. You're a maker after too many revisions. <laughs> I think this is very funny because the picture is quite funny and the general idea is very funny. Um, but it's not really relatable to me because papers in mathematics and physics and hard science are, I think, less likely to undergo multiple series of revision because either the math is right or it's wrong. If it's right, it gets published with few comments, so you don't have a very long cycle of revision. If it's wrong, it just gets rejected, basically. So I can't really relate to this, uh, but the picture is very funny. I think this happens quite a lot in other areas for PhD, especially social sciences and humanities. So I'm going to give it B tier. There we go. If you feel bad about procrastinating, just remember the Mozart wrote the overture to Don Giovanni the morning it premiered. Yeah. I, d I don't find this really funny. I think it just underlines that we're not all Mozarts, which I don't think it's really a great mood that a meme should put you in, right? So I'm just going to give this a silent D tier and leave it there. Let's go on. PhD is like a piano you just know to play it. Yeah, uh, I love this one. I'm just going to say it's a straight S for me because this is really what the PhD feels like. If you've had some exposure with research project in your undergrads, maybe it doesn't feel so much being thrown into the arena. But for me, I had very little research experience. I had a published paper, but then I swapped subjects. So I had very, very little to no research experience in mathematics specifically. So I can totally relate to this. Um, just as I mentioned, straight S. No questions about that for me. First author et al. Yeah, again, I think this plays on a very, very common a theme for PhD students. Um, the fact is, in mathematics, again, it's not very common to have very large collaborations. The most authors I've had on one of my paper was five, and that's well above average. Probably all of the papers I'm going to publish during my PhD are going to be from myself and my supervisor or myself, my supervisor, and a single collaborator. So there will be no et al in my paper, so I can't really relate to this. But I do know that this is quite a problem in some fields specifically. So for example, particle physics, where collaborations have literally hundreds of scientists working together, and they all sign all the papers. I also know that medicine is a field where a lot of collaborators work together and they basically exchange paper, which is a little bit dodgy, but 
it depends on the field, right? It would be weird for a mathematical paper to have 200 names on it. It will probably be a very special paper if that was something that was going to happen. Um, so I can relate to this. I think it's funny to most people. B tier. And finally, the last one. Me writing my thesis for more than 10 minutes. I am a fighter and not a quitter. I am resigning. Yeah, this is again spot on. Um, it delves onto the thesis writing thing. That was me again one month ago. I'm living in the UK. The whole list trust debacle last year, last October, I think, was um, on all the papers, on all the news websites. So it was like huge. I think this meme is just capitalizing on two excellent things. Again, straight S for me. So there you have it. My PhD memes tier list based on my personal experience. I absolutely loved the one from the sword in the stone. Thanks to High Impact PhD memes and all of the other pages for providing us with a constant stream of funny, high quality memes to push us through the dark times during our PhDs. For those of you who are still listening, thank you for sticking around. I really appreciate it and I hope you have found this video interesting. Feel free to reach out to me on my social media accounts. My handle is the same across all platforms. Also consider subscribing to the channel for more videos like this coming out every week. Until Sunday, goodbye!